Well, good morning. Yes, it's me, Kenny Polcari, your host of The Party. And today is Wednesday, August 21st, 2024. And here are the things you need to know to get your day started. Well, yesterday, stocks took a break, just kind of churned in line after the recent rally. Now, the BLS is due to report their massive job provision today at 10 o'clock. And don't expect the Fed to be surprised. I can't imagine. JJ's got no idea what's going on. And in fact, JJ is to speak at the Jackson Hole uh, Symposium on Friday morning at 10 a.m. So we'll find out more then. And what do we have for dinner tonight? We're going to have the classic bolognese. It is so delicious. Well, just like I said, churn, churn, churn. That's what stocks did uh, yesterday. Nothing really, right? After this stunning rally that uh, took stocks up dramatically over the past two weeks, leaving us within striking distance of making another new 2024 high. But yesterday, stocks backed off just a bit. The Dow down 62 points, the S&P down 11, the Nasdaq gave up 60, the Russell is down 25, and the Transports lost 145 points, while the equal weighted S&P backed off by 30 points. The most recent rally, as you know, sent the S&P up nearly 8% off those lows a couple of weeks ago and is now about to kiss the oversold territory again on the RSI chart. The rally has added more than $15 billion in new investments, and some of that is clearly just a bet that the Fed's going to make this announcement and plan on cutting rates, while some of it is clearly invested for the long term by long term investors. The question is, though, what is now going to happen to those investments if the Fed does, in fact, put the plan forward, right? Will they stay committed to the trade or will they hit the sell button to lock in those short term gains? And what's going to happen if the Fed doesn't put the plan forward? Oh, boy, watch out. Then it's going to be a different story. Now, to be clear, I do not think that the Fed uh, is not going to put the plan forward, right? I believe they've made it very clear that the rates are going to begin to go down. They're going to begin to move lower in September and then again in November and December. I also believe they're going to take that 25 basis point uh, route versus the jumbo route, right? They're not going to panic and make that jumbo cut at all. Even if today's BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics report, shows a massive downward revision in annual payrolls. Because I don't believe that the Fed is unaware of what's going to be reported. You can't tell me that they have no idea what's coming because I don't I just don't believe it. Um, and I can't you know, he's the he's the Fed chairman and those are FOMC members and they're making policy decisions. So I don't believe that they have no idea what's coming. And so it is what it is. Stocks are going to react uh, in a way that the uh, investor is going to react in a way that suits their profile. If you're a trader, then I expect that you're going to hit that sell button and lock in those profits and take some money off the table. Right. And if you're a long term investor, I suspect you're just going to go along, continue to go along for the ride because nothing really has changed. Right. To affect the thesis hasn't really changed. Um, but you should be waiting to take advantage of the sale that's going to be just ahead of us because the sale is coming. Remember that we've been talking about this all month, right? The end of August is a curious time. Volumes tend to dry up and moves tend to be exaggerated. And this recent move up is just another example of that exaggeration. And don't forget, we're also in that seasonally weak period of time that runs uh, now through the end of October. So again, don't assume that you missed it. Don't, ascend, don't assume that stocks are never going down. They have not, and you have not missed it, right? Uh, the market does not move in a straight line the same way trees do not grow straight to the sky. So come on, just give it a minute. Today, we're going to get mortgage applications, and I, gonna, and I expect that they are going to surge as rates have come down, right? Current year 30 current thirty year rates are now six and a quarter, 6.4%, right? Down significantly from plus 7% just a couple of months ago. We're also going to get the July FOMC minutes, and I don't expect it's going to reveal anything that we don't already know. There's nothing new coming out of those minutes. The big number today, though, is going to be that BLS. It's garnering a lot of attention. It's going to be that BLS annual payroll revision number, and it's expected to be down substantially, which all that means is that the reports that we got all year long, the ones that told us how strong and robust the labor market was, well, maybe it wasn't so strong after all. Thus, the revision and the revision lower. Now, in the end, does it really matter what that number is today? Are you changing your investment uh, thesis just because the government misreported that monthly number now? Did you build your long-term portfolio based on this one number? Eh, I don't think you did. Uh, and so while it's expected to all be dramatic and everyone's going to be talking about it, especially because now it's also an election year and the election is only two months away and early voting is only three weeks away, 
in the end, it really doesn't change the thesis, or at least for me, I don't think it's gonna change my thesis at all. So I'm not changing my life or my, my plan based on this one number. Recall yesterday I reminded you that Uncle Warren Buffett, when he announced that he sold half his position in Apple earlier this month, many people panicked and then hit the sell button as well because Warren must have known something negative was coming. Well, since then, Apple's up 15%. And so yesterday, we learned that Uncle Warren sold more stock in Bank of America. Uh, in fact, Bloomberg reports that he sold 104 million shares, leaving him with only 928 million shares and still the largest shareholder in Bank of America. And remember, uh, he has a much lower cost, right? So again, is he selling this uh, Bank of America because it hit his investing discipline, or is he selling it because he no longer believes his own thesis? My gut tells me it's because it hit its investment discipline the same way Apple did. Because if it was for any other reason, trust me, it would be out there and we'd be talking about it. And since we're not, I'm not really worried about it. In addition, while he sold it, there are always someone on the other side. Recent buyers that added to their already existing positions include Capital Group bought 30 million, Wellington Funds bought 20 million, Fidelity Funds have been buying 8 million, Norges Bank 12 million, Franklin Resources have been buying 34 million shares, you know, over a period of time, which coincidentally adds up to 104 million shares. But let's move on. Bond prices rose as, it's, as the market's preparing for a pullback, sending the 10-year yields down six basis points to end the day at 3.81%, and the two years down uh, uh, seven basis points ended at 3.98%. Oil lost another 60 cents to end the day at 73.09. It's the same story. It's the weak China. It's more supply. The API reported that U.S. crude stockpiles rose by 347,000 barrels, and that's supposed to suggest that U.S. demand is waning. <laughs> okay, you run with that. Whatever uh, remember what I said earlier this week, that we were below all three trend lines and we were specifically below the long-term trend line at 75.88. And if we failed to take that trend line back, then we could expect the test of the June-July lows of 72, which is exactly what it looks like is happening. Gold ended the day at 25.52 after testing as high as 25.70, all on the idea that the Fed is cutting rates uh, uh, in three weeks, right? This morning it's down seven bucks at 25.54 as traders are taking some money off the table after its dramatic move. But remember, it still remains near all-time highs. U.S. futures are churning this morning. Dow futures up 50, S&Ps are up two, the Nasdaq's down 12, and the Russell is up eight. European markets are up. The U.K. public sector net borrowing rose to $4 billion, up from $2.3 billion. Alex Kerr, who's a U.K. economist, suggesting that that continues to, to uh, uh, just uh, return uh, a recent bad news on fiscal position in the UK and tax increases should be expected when the new budget is presented at the end of October, uh, at the end of October, in fact, on October 30th, right? Overall, though, markets across Europe are quiet. Think also it's the end of summer as they also too are awaiting news of out of Jackson Hole when all a bunch of global Fed heads speak, but specifically Jay Powell. The S&P closed at 5597 and is very close to becoming in that overbought territory again. Markets are awaiting Friday's speech and I'm expecting that we're going to see the market retreat once we hear it. I mean, they've bought it up in anticipation. So unless he says something very different than what the market expects, the algos and traders, I think, are going to just hit the sell button, which doesn't mean you should panic. Not at all. It just means let it go until after Labor Day. In the weeks ahead, we're going to get three more reads on inflation. The PCE next week, which is expected to remain unchanged at up 2.7% year over year and up two tenths of a percent month over month. And then we're going to get another round of PPI and CPI uh, just in September, just ahead of the next FOMC meeting, which is on the 17th and 18th. So just sit tight. Target came out this morning and, uh, and announced their earnings, and they beat on nearly every line. Prices matter, and guidance forward has been raised. Sounds very much like the Walmart story. The stock is up 11% in the pre-market trading as traders just go crazy over that report. On a side note, while politics don't matter very much in the long term, it can create chaos in the sh short term and negatively end up pricing your portfolio. Thus, I just should mention that the second day of the DNC convention is now in the books. And the delegates, in fact, have confirmed that, uh, that the Kamala uh, and Timmy are their ticket going forward. And all while we 
await more policy announcements coming from the Democratic platform. So far, we've learned that we got a 44% tax uh, on capital gains. This is the proposed. We got 25% tax on unrealized gains, which is a whole nother conversation. And suddenly all kinds of guardrails around her, no tax on tips policy, right? She wants to give free healthcare, free education, and uh, free housing to all illegals, but says nothing about Americans, specifically veterans. Uh, I can't wait to hear what her what her foreign policy sounds like, right? Uh, concerning Iran and China and South Korea, Russia, Syria, et cetera, et cetera. Her website remains blank, so there's no information there. Remember, in the end, you're invested, right? You are participating in the market in both directions, up or down. You're not missing out on anything, and if you have more money to put to work, you can be patient, right? You're gonna get your chance, and for now, if you want, keep it in a gov government money market fund that's paying you nearly 5%. In the end, Remember, you should always be updating your, your shopping list. You should take advantage when it presents itself uh, and makes sense, right? And you should also maybe be adding just some defensive positions. Think utilities, think consumer staples. Uh, and again, you always wanna make sure you know what you own and why you own it. And if you get concerned, you're always, I'm always happy to talk to you or you're always happy to talk to your own advisor. In fact, give me a call, I'm happy to do it. And so what do we have for dinner tonight? <laughs> We're having the classic bolognese. This is delicious. It's a hearty bolognese. It's not super saucy per se, uh, so don't expect it to be, but it is so good. For this, you need olive oil, butter, one cup each of diced onion, diced celery, diced carrots. You need four cloves of garlic crush. You need one pound of ground beef, right? 80-20. You want plenty of fat in it. You need one cup of whole milk. You need a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. You need a cup of white wine, uh, not a Chardonnay, like I always use the Pinot Grigio Santa Margarita. You need one can of, one 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes, not puree, crushed tomatoes. Uh, and you need two, uh, two things of Parmesan cheese rinds. You're going to heat the olive oil in a large pot. You're going to add, uh, uh, you're going to add the butter. Once it's all melted, you're going to add the veggies, season it with salt and pepper, saute them around for about 10 minutes. Now you're going to add the garlic. After a couple of minutes with that, you're going to add the meat, breaking it up with the fork, and then season it with salt and pepper. Brown it. When it's all browned, you're going to add one cup of whole milk. You're gonna turn the heat to low and you're gonna just let it simmer. You gotta stir it off and you want the milk to be mostly absorbed and cooked out before you move on, right? Should be about 30 minutes or so. Now you're gonna add a little bit of nutmeg and the wine. Again, you're gonna simmer it until the wine is absorbed and evaporated another 30 minutes or so. Now you're gonna add the can of tomatoes and the cheese rinds. You're gonna turn the heat up to a slow boil and then immediately turn it down to simmer, leaving it uncovered. Let it uh, simmer for three hours or so, stirring it every 10 minutes or so, right? Um, and if it, starts to, if it starts to look like it's drying out, you could add a splash of water any once in a while. Season it again with salt and pepper, and then when it's ready, remove the rinds. You wanna serve this over a hearty rigatoni, a nice, thick, kind of big rigatoni. It is delicious. Trust me, you're never gonna miss with this recipe in any event. It's a beautiful day here. It's a little bit cloudy above, but it's not stormy. Uh, uh, but it's a little bit cloudy, so pay attention. Until tomorrow, take good care.